I want to ask you why you became a Christian. Like, what terrified why? me into religious submission was it just seemed like the thing studying to do the Holocaust. The yeah. Okay, well, you went to Yale and you were in the English department. That was before you had a conversion. What happened to you? What happened in the conversion and why did you switch your tune? <laughs> That's the funniest way of putting it that I've ever heard. Thank you for that. Why did I switch my tune? Um, yeah. I was, you know, I was raised in the Greek Orthodox Church and I had a vague faith um, at Yale, which is extraordinarily was then, and of course is now dramatically more secular, hostile to genuine biblical faith, um, hostile to uh, the ideas, the American ideas of freedom and so on and so forth. I, uh, you know, foolishly drank that Kool-Aid and drifted into um, genuine agnosticism and I was dramatically lost. I was really, um, you know, I wasn't some proud atheistic sinner, I was just lost, uh, and um, ultimately, we could talk about this later, but u- ultimately, um, I found myself, horror of horrors, moving back in with my parents, my European immigrant uh, parents who had worked menial jobs to put me through Yale University, and they're kind of looking at me like, what, what, so why are you back here again? What, what are you doing here? But I was totally lost, and in that season of my life, I was 24, uh, I got this horrible menial job uh, as a proofreader at Union Carbide in Danbury, Connecticut. The uh, the Hebrew word is Gehenna. It was awful. And, and in that misery, I met someone who began to share his faith with me. And I was initially hostile or, or at least not wanting to hear it uh, for, for many, many months. And long story short, around my 25th birthday, Uh, I had a dramatic, miraculous dream uh, in which, in a nutshell, God spoke to me so unequivocally that there was no going back. It was game over. I say it's like going to sleep single and waking up married. Can you tell me, would you tell me the dream? Now? Sure. Um. It's it's actually hard to do justice to it. Um, uh, no doubt, it 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 uh it it encompasses three parts of my life. Part of the reason it was so staggering to me as I was having this dream because I don't I don't dream very much and I had never ever had a dream anything like this. This was a this was another category of dream. It, it was like having a vision in the context of of a dream. I was unconscious, of course. I was sleeping, but. Um, I have to say a couple of things for the, for background. So you get the v- vocabulary. N- number one, grew up, uh, as the son of immigrants, my father from Greece, uh, you know, very like most Greeks, inordinately proud of being Greek and wanting to, uh, raise his kids in, in that tradition. And so that was a very important part of my growing up that I am Greek that I, uh, that this is my, my identity. Um, once, uh, my father, uh, we were at a light. I mean, I, 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 I still drive there today. And at, at this light, we saw the car in front of us on the bumper that had one of those, you know, chrome fish. This is in the seventies. And my father says, do you know what that is? And he explains to me that that's the Greek word for the Greek word for fish, uh, is, is, um, is ichthus. And it's spelled, um, you know, it's an acronym. Well, the word is ichthus. So, but the early Christians adopted that symbol of the fish as a symbol of the Christian faith because the word fish is an acronym for Isus Christos Theos Imon Sotir, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. So they used the symbol of the fish because to them, the symbol of the fish meant ichthus, Jesus Christ, the son of God, our savior. So it's the secret symbol of the Christians. And my father was, you know, thrilled to tell me that's a Greek word and that's where that comes from. Uh, and so I always associated that fish with with Christ after I saw that. So again, this is by way of background. Fishing was very important to me growing up also. I should say that, you know, if I had a hobby other than like watching sitcoms, um, it was... Uh, it, it was fishing that was very important to me. So you uh, like so, to haul things up from the depths. Don't get Jungian on me. You do that on your own time. 
Okay, so, so yeah, yeah, of course. So um, basically, uh, around this 25th birthday, if you'd said, who are you, you know, in your guts, it was, well, the, the, the Greek background in my family was vitally central to who I was. Secondly, this idea of fishing, this was, this was my main, my only hobby, the thing that I did when I, when I had time. But thirdly, the life of the mind. When I went to Yale, suddenly I cared about the meaning of life. And I really was an English major. I realized even somewhat at the time, because I'm trying to figure out the nature of reality by reading these great novels in the Western canon, I'm putting together these pieces to figure out what is the nature of reality? What is the meaning of life? And I was actually doing that uh, without doing it particularly intentionally. It was just instinctively the life of the mind. Um, and I came up, and I have to say this, so then the dream will make sense. I came up with, um, <clears throat> you know, as only a pretentious undergraduate could do, I, I, I think I've, I've got to figure it out, uh, that uh, it's, it's kind of like a literary trope. It's an image of a, of a frozen lake uh, and what all religions, world religions mean to do is, so this is where it becomes Freudian and Jungian, and you for, must forgive me, but the idea of a frozen lake, I thought this is a perfect image for what religion tries to do. You have this ice on the top of the lake, which is like the conscious mind. The ice is the conscious mind. And our goal is to drill through the ice to touch the water, which is the collective unconscious. We want to touch the divinity, the Godhead. Again, Jung's idea, not the Bible's idea, but, but this idea that uh, that's what God is, the collective unconscious. So I had this image that I developed, you know, as an undergraduate, like, okay, so that's what all religions are trying to do. They're trying to drill through the conscious mind to touch the other side, to touch the collective unconscious, which is the kind of new age idea of the divinity, the Godhead, whatever that is. So I, I, I bring all of this, you know, into my 24th year and around my 25th birthday have this dream. In the dream, I'm standing on a frozen lake, Candlewood Lake in Danbury, Connecticut. I'm ice fishing with friends. And I look at the hole in the ice and I see what you never see if you're ice fishing. I see a fish pointing its snout out of the hole and I look at it and I reach down and I lift it up by the gill because it was a, a, a pickerel or a pike. They have very sharp teeth and you'd never lip land a fish like that. So I, I, I pick it up and in the dream, I lift it up and it's a large uh, pickerel or pike and Anybody who knows that fish knows that it has a kind of bronze coloring. But on that glorious winter day, the sun was shining brightly. The sky couldn't be bluer. The ice and the snow couldn't have been whiter. And I hold up this fish in the dream. And I see that because of the sun, it looks golden. And suddenly in the dream, I realize, no, it, it doesn't just look golden, it is golden. It is a golden fish made of gold, like in a fairy tale, but it is alive, a living golden fish. And in that moment in the dream, God effectively drops this into my head, like in paragraphs. I knew this is God saying to me in this dream, you wanted to drill through the ice to touch inert water, to touch the collective unconscious, the divinity, the Godhead. I have something else for you. I have the golden fish, ichthus, Isus Christos Theos Imon Sotir, my son, your savior, Jesus Christ. How did you know that, why did you make the association between the fish specifically at that point and Christ? Well, did that Are happen you, in the dream? You, no, that's what I'm saying. It happened in the dream. I yeah, knew- no, but in the realization the dream, took place in the dream too. The realization took place within the dream. Within okay. the dream, okay. I knew within the dream that this is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Savior. I had been searching for this thing, this for to touch inert water, and God says, "I'd like to un I'd like to um, one up you with your own symbol system. I'd like to give you what you're really looking for, my Son, your Savior, Jesus Christ, a living being." And when you think about it, theologically, a fish coming out of water, what, is, what happens when a fish comes out of the water? It dies. Um, the idea that God came from his medium 
to our medium to die. Um, all of this came clear in the dream. And when I was in the dream holding this fish, I was flooded with joy because what I had believed you could not know, that, that, that the Bible is true, that Jesus is God. In the dream, I realized, no, I, I know. And as I was holding the fish, I realized I, 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 have, I have what I'm looking for, what I was looking for, which I didn't believe could be found. I, this is God. He's given himself to me. And in the dream, I was flooded with joy. Within the dream, this is before I woke up, I knew this is true and I just had this joy. So the next day I went and I told the friend of mine at work the story. I said, I had this dream. And he says, well, what do you think it means? And I said, and I, I never would have said these words. These words would have made me cringe at any previous day. I said, it means I've accepted Jesus. 